That's not good. Mark Stevens was born in 1967 in Northampton, Northamptonshire, England. His family briefly relocated to Farnborough, Hampshire in the early 80s, where he attended the Cove Senior School. He made his professional debut in 1986 as an actor in a Northampton rep production of Stags and Hens, then moved to London to enroll in drama school. That experience only lasted for six weeks, however, when an instructor led the class through an exercise in pretending to be the color orange. Stevens quit the school deciding that he would prefer to learn on the job. He took on the name Mark Warren, adopting the first name of his father as part of his new stage name. In the early days of his career, he worked hard to find opportunities without the assistance of an agent, joining the National Youth Theatre and working at Birmingham Rep Studio and in small-scale and school tours. In 1988, he wrote to the producers of an upcoming production of Godspell to ask for the opportunity to audition. He was cast in the show and would finally be signed by an agency in 1989. In 1988, he also made his first screen appearance, although it was as an uncredited extra in A Very Peculiar Practice. His first major screen appearance came in 1992 with An Ungentlemanly Act for the BBC. He would pick up more work in The Vice and in HBO's Band of Brothers, and he appeared in a guest-starring role as Morgan de Stang, in Highlander The Series, a mainstay of the 90s first-run syndication boom. Warren's work at the time also included the sort of work that is common for jobbing actors, not just playing major roles, but also appearing in crowd scenes as an extra and acting as Ewan McGregor's stand-in for the digital storyboards of Star Wars Episode One. The Phantom Menace. In 2000, he received the Royal Television Society Award for his role as Monks in the ITV production of Oliver Twist. He continued picking up guest roles and also featured in a main role as Danny Blue in the first four series of the BBC's Hustle. In 2006, he had a banner year for genre television work including playing Elton Pope in Doctor Who's Love and Monsters, Mr. Tiatame in the Sky One production of Hogfather, and Count Dracula in a production for BBC Wales. He continues to work on stage, having appeared in The Rise and Fall of Little Voice, Worried About the Boy, a show based on the life of Boy George, and a new stage adaptation of Cool Hand Luke at the Aldich Theatre. Stevens prefers not to give interviews if he can help it, describing himself as intensely private. That's very much in line with the jobbing actor's work ethic he follows. As he says, I just turn up and get on with it, really. I try not to get in the way too much. I thought you were my fiancé. And why did you think that? Loads are similar, and I think he was on that ship. Oh. They're all dead. Who are on that ship? I'm a little lad who does berries and cream. In 2006, Granada Television began work 
on a new adaptation for WGBH Boston's Masterpiece Theatre and for BBC Wales. This adaptation of Dracula was written by Stuart Harcourt, who had previously written for Peak Practice, Hearts and Bones, and Jericho of Scotland Yard, and whose work has since appeared in Marple, Poirot, and Agatha Raisin, among other British TV mainstays. At the helm would be director Bill Eagles, who had begun his directing career with television documentaries, including an episode of Horizon and The Real X-Files, America's Psychic Spies, before moving on to direct 2000's Beautiful Creatures. He relocated to the United States and took on work directing episodes of CSI, Surface, Invasion, and Numbers. And since Dracula, he has directed episodes of Burn Notice, Gotham, and Pennyworth. Loosely based on the original novel, this adaptation brings to the surface two common subtexts of the Dracula stories, sex and disease, as Dracula comes to England when Arthur Holmwood calls upon him for help with his syphilis infection, not realizing exactly who Dracula is. The desire to take care of his infection in secret results in Holmwood potentially releasing an even worse infection into the public at large. It's a version of Dracula that looks, honestly, like it could have been pulled from the annals of fanfiction.net in the early 2000s, with dark love triangles, secret passions, and an occultist society of Dracula worshippers moving in the shadows. Honestly, it's rare that you see a Granada production for the BBC that plays this much like a mockbuster from The Asylum, but it's that kind of fast and loose storytelling where things don't necessarily have to make sense. They just have to have the right look. You can't control me. You think I'm a man's slave? Well, I'm a little out of those berries and cream. Mark Warren is at the center of an amazing cast, performing a very ridiculous version of the story. After all, you have David Suchet as Van Helsing, Dan Stevens as Arthur Holmwood, Donald Sumter as Alfred Singleton, Sophia Miles as Lucy, it's all an excellent cast. Dracula's guiding light seems to be, what if Lord Byron, but also Alistair Crowley. He has the brooding, tortured aesthetic of a debauched romantic poet, but also heads up a blood and sex magic cult. And he's also probably the most cold-blooded killer we've seen on the list. Yes, Dracula always kills, but usually it's to feed or protect himself. Warren's Dracula takes the time to brutally murder people out of petty spite, and is seemingly just as likely to break your neck as to bite it. (music) 2006's Dracula had mixed reviews upon its release, although most published reviews singled out Sophia Miles, who had previously appeared in the Underworld series, for praise. Many of those professional critics, however, did not mention her acting talent, so much as how well she filled out a nightgown. Hello, boys. Have a good night's rest. I missed you. Yeah, the 2000s were a bad time to be a woman in a movie being reviewed by a male critic. Not that there are many good times to be a woman in a movie being reviewed by a male critic. Despite a final image that was clearly intended to tease a sequel, there was never a follow-up for this version of Dracula. So what do you think? Did you catch 2006's Dracula, either on Masterpiece Theatre or through the BBC? Drop into the comments and let me know what you think of Mark Warren's performance. And while you're there, make sure that you hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell in order to be notified whenever there are new videos on the channel. And there's also a share button if you feel inclined to share with your friends, because after all, sharing is caring. 
Until next time, I am Glenn Williams, the film optimist, reminding you to watch like it means something.